Hello everybody, so in this lesson we're going to do quite an interesting question. We are working at a hydroelectric plant and we are the pump engineer and so we need to pump water from point A to point B and we need to know the power of the pump. This is a very valid kind of question because when you are working at a place like this and you are the pump engineer for example, you need to buy the correct pump. The pump has to be strong enough to be able to do its required task. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 10,000 liters of water and we're going to pump it from A to B in a time of 10 minutes and the velocity at A is 1 meters per second and at B it's 2 meters per second. So guys we're not going to be able to use this formula because the velocity is not constant. So then we go back to the original definition of power which is the following. And so time is easy, we've got that. We need to work, find the work. So work can be found, and remember this is the work of the pump. That's what we're looking at. And so we need to find the work of the pump. Now we know that there's different formulas for work. We know that there's work equals to force times distance times cos theta. But now we don't know the force of the pump. We don't know the distance. I mean we know the distance is 10 meters upwards, but we don't know the actual length of the path. And so we can't even use this formula. W net equals to change in EK, that can't be used because we know the change in the velocity, but W net, that's going to be the work on the water while it's busy going up. And so at any given moment, that water is going to have FG parallel. There's no friction, so we're not going to take that into account. And then there's also going to be the force of the pump. But we can't get FG parallel because FG parallel is equal to MG sin theta and we don't have the angle of the slope. And so what we can do is a much better approach. We can work out the energy of the object at A, work out the energy of the object at B, and yeah, then after that I'll explain what's going on. So let's work out the energy at A. Now when I say energy, we, can, we need to work out the total energy of that object. That will be the mechanical energy. So let's work out the mechanical energy at A, which is equal to the following. And at A, there is no height, and so the potential energy falls away. And so kinetic energy is a half mv squared. Now the mass they haven't given us, but they've told us that there's 10,000 liters, and they said that assume that one liter of water is equal to one kilogram. Just a side note, that's actually a very accurate, it's almost perfect, that assumption, because water has a density of one kilogram per meter cube. And so that's a very good assumption that. So 10,000 liters is going to be the same as 10,000 kilograms. The velocity at that point is 1 meters per second. And so if you go work that out, that's going to give us 5,000 joules. Okay, so this water has 5,000 joules down there. Now let's work out the energy at B. So at B, it's got potential energy and kinetic energy. So the potential energy is mgh, so it's a 10,000 kilogram of water. 9.8 is that. And then the height is 10. Then the kinetic energy is a half of the mass times by the velocity, which is 2 meters per second, squared. So you type all of that in on the calculator, and that gives us 1 million joules. So it has a million joules of energy at B and 5,000 joules of energy at A. Where did that extra energy come from? The pump. So the pump's energy is equal to the 1 million minus the 5,000 that it had on the ground, and so the pump has added 995,000 joules of energy. So we can work out the power of the pump by taking the energy or the work due to the pump and dividing by the time, which is 10 minutes, which is the same as 600 seconds. And so the power output is 1,658.33 watts. Now, the last formula you could have used is this one over here. Because remember, this formula does everything for you. So WNC stands for the work of, or the energy, of non-conservative. Now, non-conservative is things like friction or applied forces. Now, the pump is an applied force. So that would go over here. So you would just say WNC. Then your change in EP is your MGH final minus MGH initial plus your change in kinetic, which is a half mv squared minus a half mv squared. That's final, and that's initial. I'm not going to do all the calculations, but if we typed it all in, 
your your mass would be 10,000, your height final would be 10, your height initial would be 0, so this part would fall away, your velocity final would be 2, and your velocity initial would be 1. And if you did this, you would get your work due to the non-conservative forces, which is the pump, and then you would use this formula, where this value would come from there, and then the time we already have, and then you would work it out like that. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching.